you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hey, how's it going everybody? Brad the Guitologist here. In this video, we're going to look at a, yet another pedal. I have no idea what this thing is, and I guess we'll be figuring this out together. Alright, so this is a Creation Audio Labs Incorporated MK 4.23 Boost pedal. Let's pop it open and see why it isn't working. Well, actually, before we even pop it open, I can tell already that this switch is bad. So that might be uh, the problem. Let's change out a switch. Missing a couple screws here on the top of this thing. So that may or may not, well, actually it usually doesn't bode well. If you have missing screws, that means somebody's been in there before. And if someone's been in there before, um, that usually also means that things are not in the correct order. Oh, what the heck is that? Okay. And there's a piece of the switch. Looks like it coming apart. And yeah, this switch is definitely in really bad shape. Let's see, is that a battery? What is that? That's okay. That's that's the circuit. Wow. Looks like the whole circuit is contained in this little thing and it's zip tied to this little board with the switch on it. Hmm. Alright. Well, a lot of times switches can be fixed. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case here or not, but a lot of times they can. Uh, in this case, I don't think that's going to be the case. We let's see. Well, we got this little piece. We got this little mysterious thing, <clears throat> and then we got this little piece that looks like it goes maybe on the back of this and rocks. And then inside the switch right there, we have some contacts. So let's figure out what's going on with this. Okay. Well, there's another one. So we have two of these little mysterious things, and then we have, I'm sure those make contact. Uh, but the question is how? I would say they probably fit down in there and rock back and forth. Somehow, like, maybe like that. We're going to have to order a part for this one, I believe. And if it, if it turns out to be the case that there's more wrong with this thing than just this switch uh, i.e. if if uh, there's something bad inside of this thing um, this one may be a total loss because I you know I'm not about to tear open someone's black box and start trying to troubleshoot this especially when I have no documentation or schematic or anything like that and I doubt there's one available this looks to me like a a boutique build of some kind. I'm just not familiar with it. Um, it may be a case where everybody's like, "Oh, you're you're an idiot for not being." How everybody knows the MK423. <laughs> well, no, not me. I'm not much of a pedal guy, so I don't really. Uh, I haven't kept up with all the advancements in pedal technology, really. Over, especially over the last decade or so, it seems like everybody has a has a pedal company. Um, it's just uh, it's a lot of stuff on the market. It's hard to keep up with it. Um, let's see what we can do with this switch. Maybe we can fix it. I don't know. Let me think about it for a second. We do have several parts here, but it looks like we might be missing. If these are what I think they are, and they rock, rock back and forth... Uh, on those then we probably are missing something yeah we're probably gonna have to just order a new switch I don't uh, I don't foresee being able to fix this one okay I'm definitely missing one of these little silver pieces 
if I had all three of these, this is how they sit down in there, and the switch, this thing, this piece, uh, gets rocked back and forth, kind of like, like this and like this, when it's down in there, and it pushes these pieces to make contact with, you know, either this side when it's over here, or on this side when it's over here, and they're, I'm missing one of them. Uh, if I wasn't missing one, I could fix this for sure, but... I am definitely missing one. But this is how we go back together, something like something like this. And then this all crimps to the housing. I think. Okay, I got the new switch in for this pedal. Uh, but I think what I'm gonna do, this is the exact same switch. Um, well, I say exact, exact same dimensions, uh, same type of switch, built the same way. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, instead of desoldering this from this board and taking all the time to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to open up this new switch and steal that little piece out of it and insert it into this one. So we'll transplant a piece from here to here. Okay, so first things first, let's um, open it up. Well, that's interesting. Uh, this one only has one contact in it. Is that is that correct? Is that correct? Hmm. No, there's two. There's three. Oh, okay. I guess I turned them up sideways whenever I opened it. Okay, I was I was about to trip out on that. I was like, uh, okay, they didn't they didn't even finish making this one. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, I'm also going to take this opportunity to um, to fix this this top on this. I think I actually might transplant uh, all of these guts just just for the hell of it, since these are a little bit older. Um, I'll transplant this top as well. The only thing I'll basically keep is the blue housing. It's a lot easier than replacing the entire switch. And I think, uh, you know, it just it makes more sense to me just to do that than to desolder this thing from the board and all that. I mean, I could go through all that trouble, but I just don't see the reason why I should. <laughs> this makes uh, more sense in a couple different ways. For one... Um, it's going to be less stress and strain on this little board, and it should just, you know, should just be a little safer, not to even have to mess with it, so just prevent me from making any mistakes, you know, and they do happen. Alright, we'll straighten this up, and again, I'm going to transplant pretty much all of the pieces from uh, my new one. Alright, well, there we go. It's on there. And I don't think it's coming off, so we're good to go with this. Um, I did break a lead. I did break a lead moving this this thing around, so I'm gonna have to resolder. I'm gonna have to resolder this blue lead right here, but that's not a huge deal.
Okay. Well, that's it, I believe. I think that's it. All right, so this thing only had two screws when it came to me holding the top on, so I've replaced uh, all four of them actually with a matching set of screws, so at least they match when you look at it. Uh, also, on the bottom we're missing some rubber feet, and I happen to have some rubber feet, so we'll go ahead and replace those also. Okay. So now it's got some feet on it. Let's uh let's fire it up. Let's see what happens. Okay, check this out. Uh, when you press down on this, obviously the the way this is mounted, the all the pressure from the spring and from the um, the lever that presses down. Uh, goes into this housing. Well, the only thing holding this housing is are these little clips. So if you press down on this, the whole bottom actually moves downward and it won't click. But if you see that, see how far up that moved? See there? Just the whole thing moved down. But if you hold it, works fine. This is a poor design. This really isn't a, a good design for um, for this particular switch. Now the switch housing is worn out so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do something to, to hold this um, upward basically. Uh, even if I put in a new switch, if I replace the entire housing and desoldered this thing like um, I was going to do originally, I would still be stuck with the problem of uh, how to ensure this never happens again in the future. Um, and I believe this would just happen over and over again with no matter what switch you put in here because of the way it's designed. So uh, what really needs to happen is this needs to be secured to this a little bit better, these two pieces. So we'll have to figure something out for that. Okay, I've given this a little bit of thought and I think the solution here is going to be uh, tri-fold. So we've got a little bit of room between where this, the bottom usually sits and the bottom of this case. So we need something in the bottom of this case to basically hold this up. And I, what I think I'm going to do is use some, uh, use some hot glue in the bottom of this, basically melted hot glue. Uh, so when you put this down, the hot glue will actually press upward against the bottom of this. So that's one thing. Uh, secondly, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to um, squeeze these a little bit better on here because I think they might be slightly loose as well. So I'll squeeze those from both sides. I may have to take this off temporarily to do that, um, but we can replace that zip tie. We'll squeeze those and then I might come in here also and, and put some epoxy over all of this on this side and on the other side as well um, to keep to keep these two pieces from coming apart. So as long as it stays like this it's fine uh, but the minute you know the minute you don't have any pressure on the bottom you can't get it to switch at all so um, and the problem the problem with the old switch was actually exacerbated by the fact that it didn't have this little you see this little lip right here this little lip is designed it to, to hit this piece to keep it from going you know all the way down putting more force downward force into this case. Well this didn't doesn't have such a lip so when you stomp on this thing all of your uh, force is going down into this piece and just pushing it away from it so um, so yeah the problem was I, I would be willing to bet that this uh, pedal this particular design uh, this is a very common issue on these I would say especially if they used this style of switch without uh, this little lip. Alright, I just want... Mm-hmm. 
Okay, we'll wait for that to cure and see how it does. I'm, I'll be very curious. Okay, it is definitely it is touching, so that's good. Okay, so there's that part of the of the job done. Um, uh, I guess we'll mix up some epoxy now and and get that on there. All right, well that seems to have done the trick, and it's switching like it should now. Uh, let's give it a test. We'll run it through my little bench amp here. That's pretty much what it's supposed to do. It's a it's a clean signal boost. So yeah, nothing real sexy about it. I mean, it's just it is what it is. It's a clean signal boost. Um, but yeah, it works now where <laughs> it didn't before, and it's in a lot better shape than it was probably even originally because uh, now it it shouldn't have that same problem again. Um, if it does break, it should be something else. So yeah, so that's all for this one. Hope you guys hit the subscribe button. Uh, thank you guys so much for sticking around, and for now, y'all take care. You're traveling to another dimension.